All right, developing and new this hour, a major announcement in that Gilgo Beach murder case out of New York. The suspect in this case, Rex Hewerman, is now charged in a fourth murder. And what you're seeing now is a live picture. We're awaiting an update and a press conference that the legal teams will be holding. We expect Rex Hewerman's attorneys to be speaking to the media. You can see police kind of letting the media know what's happening. And when that takes place, we'll bring it to you. In the meantime, let's talk more about what this new charge means for the prosecution's case. Joining me now, Jesse Weber, News Nation legal contributor and anchor at the Law and Crime Network. Uh, hi there. This is seems like a pretty big development, but it's also not a surprise that he's being charged in this fourth murder. How significant is it to bolstering the prosecution's case, Jesse? Well, Marnie, you said it right. I mean, he was always the prime suspect in the murder of Maureen Brainerd Barnes, who went missing in 2007. Look, when you have a case where he is charged with the deaths of multiple women, it definitely helps the prosecution's case and their narrative that this was, in fact, a serial killer. Now, to be clear, the reason some people might be saying, why is he only charged right now with second-degree murder and not first-degree murder as with respect to the other three victims is because of the time frame. So one of the reasons he was charged with first First degree murder with the other three victims is because that was killings that happened within a 24 month span. That is under the New York statute, how you get to first degree murder. He allegedly killed her in 2007. So it definitely shows this period of uh, this time period of, of, of escalation of how long this crime spree allegedly went on for. So when we see this eventually at a trial for these four victims, you are going to see evidence from 2007 all the way through 2010 and beyond. Now, I, I have to tell you, um, it's 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 really good to hear that the prosecution didn't go forward with charges immediately. You remember, this has been months since he was initially charged. So it seems to me that they really have dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's to make sure that the evidence lines up to actually get him uh, to be convicted of this charge, which is what they're hoping for. If my memory serves me correctly, I think the first three charges that surprised all of us happened in July after years and years of investigation. You talk about the evidence. The evidence the state says links Hewerman to this fourth murder is a belt buckle with those initials WH or HM. How does that piece of evidence play into the case as a whole? It's circumstantial. I mean, it definitely helps. I think there's more. There's got to be more. I remember he was tied to the murders of all these other women through DNA, through cell phone records, through internet search history. I think that when they announced uh, that, remember, he was charged with the murders of these three women, but he was the prime suspect in the death of Maureen Brainerd Bards, they already had evidence, but they didn't quite have everything they needed before they can bring an indictment against him. So I think there is going to be a lot more. We're probably going to learn more details during the course of this press conference, but also don't be surprised if authorities don't give us all the information. They don't want to give everything until this actually goes to trial. They don't want to taint a future jury pool. They don't want to jeopardize this case in any way. So we're definitely going to get more answers during this press conference about why now they felt ready to charge him. But uh, we might not have all the answers. Right. Mountains of circumstantial evidence, much of which has been released publicly. But then the smoking gun, so to speak, would be the DNA evidence. And they say they were able to pull that from a pizza crust and then link it to a hair on one of the burlap bags that was wrapped around the victims. It comes down to this DNA, how the jury perceives it, but the attorneys for Hewerman call that a flimsy clue and are arguing the constitutionality of even gathering it in the process of securing it. Is there a legal argument there that stands? There's always a legal argument. Whether or not it stands is a different question. I mean, I've covered cold cases before where genetic genealogy and DNA evidence has come into question uh, by defendants. Now, look, it, you could say, and we also have to remember that his wife, his estranged wife's hair was found uh, on, these, uh, on the bodies as well. That evidence can always be attacked. You could say, you know, was it transferred there? It might not be as strong as blood evidence. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.